Hey, how are you? Nathan here from PH Studios, and welcome back to another tutorial covering artificial intelligence. I was going to do this video last weekend, but it was Thanksgiving, and I took that ch chance to uh, just relax and have everything just, just do nothing, basically. So if you celebrate Thanksgiving, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving last weekend. If you do not celebrate Thanksgiving, I just hope you have a, had a wonderful weekend in general. And uh, now we're back to doing tutorials. And this one is covering an artificial intelligence movement algorithm called Wandering. Now, the past two tutorials, Seeking and Fleeing, they're simple movement operations that do a simple task. Seeking, you want the object to go from your where it is located right now to a target location. That's seeking. You want to seek to the target. Fleeing. We want to do the opposite. We want to be aware of an enemy. And when it gets within a certain threshold, we want to avoid them by moving the complete opposite direction. So we do a flee operation if it's in within a certain distance. Wandering is similar but quite different. What well, Wandering, we are basically... Throwing a game object into a world and say, move around the world, don't hit any obstacles, or go outside of the world, and just explore. That's all we want you to do, is wander around the empty space and learn about the environment. The last part we'll actually cover in a later tutorial. Because that gets into more complicated uh, Bayesian networks and um, just learning the environment can be a very complex task to deal with. So all this tutorial will do, and all the previous tutorials, we just do a simple algorithm. And what the algorithm is going to do is it's going to have the object, the player object, move around in the game world. But it will not allow it to pass through the sides of the screen. Now, that might sound boring, and we've done that in the past with many other videos, if you've uh, watched my videos in the past. I've done that many times before. So it can be a little boring with just that. So I spice things up a little bit for the wandering. And when it's nowhere near the sides of the screen, when it's actually moving in a straight line, what I did is I had it wander in a straight line. Now what I mean by that is it will, if you draw a straight line, it will zigzag along that line. It will rotate within a certain threshold that I choose, and I chose 30 degrees for this example. So it will rotate clockwise 30 degrees, then when it reaches that 30 degree difference, it will turn around and rotate 30 degrees counterclockwise. And then it will repeat that until it re when it reaches its destinated angle, it will go the opposite way. And when it reaches its destinated angle, it's going to go the opposite way again. So it's going to do a zigzag operation, but it's going to be nice and smooth because we do a, a built-in function with a X and A that you can use. Uh, you can credit yourself if you use other game frameworks or architectures or uh, just other programming languages. You can credit yourself. It's a pretty simple operation to do. But it gives us a nice smooth movement from a one value to the next. So all that combined is going to create a nice wandering movement operation that it's going to avoid being hit by the sides of the screen. It's going to turn around and go the opposite way once it reaches the side of the screen. And then it's going to do a zigzag, but nice and smooth zigzag if it's moving in a straight line. So let me do a quick demonstration, and then I'll go into the code and demonstrate that. All right, so let me go ahead and move this for you. All right, so as you see, it's zigzagging and then it went to the bottom of the screen and now it's going to the right side of the screen and it's going to turn around because it can't go outside of the game window 
So it does that operation when it reaches the sides of the screen. It says I need to rotate it. I need to go the opposite way so I can be safe. And now we're getting somewhere. So now it's moving in a straight line and it's doing the rotation. It's doing the zigzag nice and smooth zigzag as you can see here. Uh, just to give it a little more spice with the wander operation instead of just moving in a straight line that would be kind of boring. Okay, so once it reaches the side of the screen, you see it starts turning. And now, this can be a little bit a uh, complex thing to understand. The closer it gets to the edge of the screen, the more intense the vector will be. So if we actually go into the code, we can observe that we're using an adjustment vector. So when it reaches the sides of the screen within a certain threshold value, it needs to be the player needs to be adjusted using the adjustment vector. Now the closer it gets to that edge of the screen, the more intense the adjustment vector will be. Now if it's above a certain threshold, you will not get any adjustment vector because you're outside in the middle of the screen so you're safe, you don't need to be adjusted. But as you get closer and closer to the edge of the screen and you're within that threshold, the adjustment vector will become more intense because you need to be pushed away from that side of the screen. So that's what this is doing. Okay, for example, I set the threshold at 20 pixels. Now, with DirectX and XNA, the left side of the screen is at pixel 0. So, let's use that as a demonstration. Now, when I'm when the player dot rectangle, we're using a bounding rectangle, we have our texture, the space shooter texture that little spaceship here, that texture is has a bounding rectangle around it. So if the left side of that bounding rectangle is less than the threshold, so it, if, it's a, if the left side of the game window, if it's within 20 pixels of the left side of the game window, we need to calculate the adjustment vector. Now we calculate it based on the difference between the threshold and the left side of that bounding rectangle. Now what this means is the closer it gets to the very edge of the game window, either side, the top, bottom, left or right, the closer it gets to the very edge, the more intense the distance will be. So we'll do the same thing with the right side, but we need to calculate the right side of the game window, which is the viewport.width, minus the threshold. Then we need to subtract the rectangle dot right, the right side of the bounding rectangle. Then we'll get a distance value, and then we set the adjustment vector to that. So this is a lot more complicated than a simple bounce. I, oh, I reached the top of the game window, now I need to bounce and go down. So this is a lot more complicated than a simple bounce operation that we've been dealing with in the past. Because what we want to do here is we want it to do a smooth transition. If you actually watch the game, you'll see a smooth transition... It will rotate it. It will do a smooth transition to the opposite direction. You see it rotate. It does a smooth rotation. And it goes down. So that's what we were getting at here. Is a smooth way to do this operation. And also be very simple. So it's using vector math. It will be calculated. We need to add it to the velocity. So it'll be pushing the object within a certain adjustment. Now, once we modify the velocity, we are we do not know that we still have the same speed. So we need to normalize it and then set the link to speed. 
Now, what does that mean? If I'm traveling at positive 20 pixels in the X direction, which means I'm going to the right, I'm moving to the right, and zero in the Y, so I'm just moving to the right. Now, my adjustment, my speed, needs to be 20. So, as I reach the right side of the game window, I'll be adjusting the velocities X, let's say, negative 5. So now I'm going 15. However, I still need to be doing 20 pixels per second. I still need that speed. So I need to normalize that velocity and set the length to speed. And then I'll be moving some direction the Y because I have rotated. My object is rotating it, so I move in some direction in the Y axis. So that is why we need to reset the velocity to a length of speed to be sure that we can travel whatever our speed is. I think I set it up as 100 pixels a second. It needs to travel 100 pixels per second at all times, no more, no less. So I, the only way to guarantee that I'm doing that is to reset it once I perform the adjustment. I need to reset the velocity. I need to normalize it, and then I need to multiply it by the speed. Alright, now once that's done, I need to rotate the object based on the velocity. I need to change the delta angle, and then set the next angle so I can do the zigzag operation. And the zigzag operation is actually being done here. We do a linear interpolation from the play rotation to the next angle and we this calculates this is basically handling the speed now if I do 0 0.1 you can see that it's actually faster you can see the zigzag is actually faster so if I decrease that the speed becomes slower so the linear interpolation calculates it moves it from the player rotation to the next angle, and uh, we provide a amount here. The higher this value is, the quicker it will reach that next angle, that second value. This, this is between 0 and 1. Alright. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you understood a lot of it. Uh, now we're getting into the more complex things here. Think of it as a force vector. The sides of the screen have a force that repels the gameplay object. As, as Think of it as magnets. You have a magnet and then you have another mag magnet. And if you put them in a certain direction, it will repel each other. Now, the closer they get, the more intense that force will be, and the more intense they will want to be to push away from each other. That's basically what we're doing here. The closer it gets to the sides of the screen, the more intense the gameplay object wants to move away from that screen, that side of the screen. So when it barely reaches that threshold, it will have a small adjustment vector. So it'll be pushed by a small amount. But when we're the farther, the closer we get to that side of the screen, the more intense that adjustment vector will be. And of course, when it's moving in a straight line like it is right now, it'll do the 30 degrees zigzag. Now I can actually adjust the 30 degrees, and let's say we want to do it 90 degrees. And just to demonstrate what to do, I'm going to make that really fast. So now it's doing a massive zigzag here. It's really not that beneficial. Maybe if I slowed it down just a little bit. So there you go. This was Wandering, and I hope you enjoyed it.
Okay, so now that we're getting into the more complicated things, I think I'm going to move around to the... Uh, I think I'm going to do some minor adjustments to my formatting on the videos. Take a look at my video for 2D collision detection. If you do not use XNA and you just want to focus on these artificial intelligence tutorials, Go ahead and watch it anyway and see what I do in that video. I do, basically, I do a video overlay and I discuss the algorithm in great detail. Just like I do here, but the video overlay really helps with the 2D collision and how it works. I think I'm going to do that in the future with these tutorials because it will get pretty complicated. It'll be a lot easier to describe with the video overlay. So go ahead and watch that tutorial. Let me know what you think if you want those included. But the bad thing about that is it will have a lot of more editing time for me to do that. So it's kind of a more beneficial for you and more time consuming for me. So it might take longer to get tutorials out if we do it that way. But anyway, next tutorial is obstacle avoidance, and we're just going to build on the wandering. So it's not going to be as complicated. We're just going to avoid boxes along with the sides of the screen. So we're just going to wander, but we're going to avoid boxes as well. Alright, I hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching. Have a nice night.